Hi, welcome back to Storytime with Susan. We are continuing with our book, The Adventures of the Bailey School Kids and Dragons Don't Cook Pizza. Well, maybe they do, but we'll find out. So let's continue with chapter seven. Duck, Eddie yelled before Howie could say another word. There goes a wild dragon now. Eddie flapped his hat all around Howie's head before Howie grabbed the dragon hat and glared at Eddie. Go ahead and make jokes. But I know all about dragons and they're more than make believe. How can you be so sure? Lisa asked. Once, in the days of kings and castles, knights made their fortunes battling fire-breathing monsters. These horrible beasts terrorized people by breathing fire on the crops and eating young girls. Sound like the perfect house pets to me, Eddie said with a grin. Melody jabbed her elbow into Eddie's side. But Howie continued his story. The knights destroyed all the dragons except for one. It was the most dangerous dragon of them all, Howie told his friends. Night after night rode off to battle the terrible beast, but they never returned. What happened to them? Lisa asked in a whisper. The dragon gobbled them up, Howie told her. So the king sent for the most famous knight of all. He was known throughout the land because his magic sword could hypnotize even the most savage of dragons. That knight's name was St. George. Lisa gasped and Melody's eyes grew round. That's the restaurant owner's name, Melody said. Howie nodded. Exactly. George of Jules Pizza Castle is the one and only St. George the Dragon Tamer. But why didn't St. George kill the last dragon? Melody asked. Because a dragon's scales hold the secret to eternal life, Howie told her. St. George tamed that ferocious beast so he could live forever. Now, he's keeping his fire-breathing dragon captive in Bailey City and using its fire to bake pizza. Howie waved his mysterious riddle under his friend's noses, and the dragon has had enough. Lisa looked at Howie's riddle and sniffed. If Howie's right, then that dragon must be the saddest creature alive. Melody nodded. That's exactly what the riddle says. She read the middle two lines of the riddle out loud. Captured sadness, lonely madness. Eddie stood up tall and nodded. It's up to us to free the dragon. Eddie laughed so hard, he fell back against the trunk of the giant oak tree. How he's lost it now, Eddie said. He's trying to convince us to jailbreak a make-believe monster. Maybe Eddie's right, Melody said. After all, dragons live in fairy tales, not Bailey City. They guard treasure and cook fair maidens for dinner, Eddie added. Lisa nodded. And I'm pretty sure dragons don't cook pizza, she said. They do if there's a mighty knight waving a magic sword in front of their noses, Howie snapped. Eddie reached out and patted his friend on the back. Don't get mad, Eddie said, but there are no such things as dragons. I say they are, Howie yelled. Eddie stood up straight and rolled his fingers into a tight fist. I say there aren't, Eddie yelled back. Melody stepped between her two friends. 
There's only one way to prove whether dragons exist, she said. How? Eddie and Howie asked. Meet me here after school, and I'll tell you, she said, but beware. It may be dangerous. Very dangerous. So, what do you think will happen next? Are they going on a dragon hunt? Check with me next time while the adventure continues. Like, subscribe, and have a good day.